Hi, this is Sarit Switzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 290 for the 12th of Elul and Elip year. So comedians, countless times over, have made jokes about the difference between a newly married couple and a couple that's been married for 20, 30, 40, 50 years or so, right? What are the common jokes that you hear? You hear about how the newly married couple, it's like they can't stop looking into each other's eyes. They see no wrong. They see no flaws. They're obsessed with one another. They're so nice to one another. And then you look at this older couple and they're bickering and they're annoyed with one another and they're fighting and they really don't get along and things like that. So I never like these jokes um, because I find them to be very negative and I don't think that they're necessarily true and you often see older couples who have been together for years and they have a lovely marriage and the love only gets stronger and deeper with time. It's true however that if you speak to them often they'll tell you that this is not something that comes naturally. This is something that they actually had to work on and to some, something to really cultivate to not lose that initial passion that they had in the beginning. We see this also in other areas of life, not only in terms of romantic love, but something which I title today's podcast with often when we, when we are working on different projects, I know that I am guilty of this. And I think many people can relate to this, that you get this idea for a project in your head and you're really excited about it. You're really, really passionate and you begin it right away and you start working on it. You're put your all into it and everything. And then what happens a few days pass, maybe a few weeks pass, maybe a few months if you're lucky and you lose that passion, you lose the drive and maybe you're like not really motivated anymore to keep the project going. I find one way to remedy this, something that I actually, I can use this podcast as an example. When I first started this podcast, I was really excited to launch it, right? I put together the logo and all that kind of stuff. And I'll be honest, there are some days where it's sort of like, I'm not that excited about it, but I made it into a routine where I work on it day after day after day. And I do find that the hardest part is getting started. And once I get started, then it kind of flows. And I find that also what helps with it, what helps with the feeling of being able to stay passionate about this project is because even though, yes, it's a Tanya project, it's it's something I've been working on for a while, every day is a little bit different, right? Or it's very different because every day I'm working on a totally different episode, something totally new. So the newness is there. The newness is fresh. And I'm looking at this Tanya that even though I've studied it for years at this point, you know, learning the daily chitas every year, every time, especially now that I'm doing this podcast, I'm really looking at it through a new lens and I'm looking at it in a whole new way and I'm finding this newness there. So the newness is is really essential, whether we're talking about romantic love, where you want to maintain that sense of newness and freshness in your relationship, or whether you're talking about different projects that you're working on, or really anything in your life. And so this is the theme of the Tanya of today, of the epistle that we're going to be beginning. This is epistle 14, and we're going to start the the epistle today. And once again, the theme is Tzedaka. This is a theme, if you've noticed, is a recurring theme. Might sound redundant at this point, but it's not. It's recurring and it's something that just, you know, is perpetual. The ultra upper really, really, really wants to emphasize the idea of giving Tzedaka and giving and giving and giving to no end, specifically to different different funds um, to, to the land of Israel. And in today's episode, he's going to specifically be talking about referencing different funds that he had set up in relation to the land of Israel. And where does this newness come in? Is the ultra rabbit is going to address this point with his chassidim, talking to his chassidim in this very personal kind of way, where he's going to tell them that, you know, when these originally, these funds were set up for the land of Israel, and everybody was really excited about them, right? It's really natural. Like, let's say you do a fundraiser or something like that. People give 
right away because it's it's exciting. It's a new thing. Like you you put uh, something on Kickstarter or GoFundMe or something like that. The first day, the second day, that's when you're going to be getting in the big donations. Maybe a week later, a year later, how many are coming in? They might still be trickling in, but it's not going to be with as much enthusiasm. Other projects have come about since that time. Uh, other causes, there's always new causes, right? And so that original cause might lose its passion, it might lose its power. And so the altar of it here in today's in today's um, epistle that we're going to begin is addressing this point, and he's telling his chassidim to not lose that original love that they had for this campaign, to not lose that original uh, drive that they had to give to the land of Israel. And he's going to relate this also to God and how God doesn't lose this, this passion for giving to the land of Israel. Because we know that there's a principle that while God, there's people have, think that when we talk about the story of creation, it says that God created the world through six, in six days and then rested on Shabbos. People think, okay, God created the world in six days and then he left and here we are and there's the laws of nature and all that. But according to Hasidus, that's not the case at all. And we actually know that Hashem is constantly creating the world, something from nothing at every single moment, every sing, single millisecond of time. And this is especially true, the focus is going to be in the land of Israel, that the vivifying force that Hashem gives to the land of Israel is constant and perpetual and it's not it wasn't just a one-time thing and so Hashem is constantly renewing and vitalizing the energy of Israel something from nothing all the time and so this renewed vitality that Hashem is giving to the world this can be thought of as this new love so it's like just as God is not becoming like dry and uh and and just habitual with the energy and the vitality that he's giving to the land of Israel, the altar Rabbi here is pleading with his chassidim to also not be just habitual in their giving to the land of Israel, but actually they should keep this passion that they have for giving to the land of Israel. So let's get into the text. And again, for context, this is the beginning of Epistle 14. And here we go. So the altar Rabbi begins very straightforward, in a very straightforward manner, saying that this letter is the purpose of this letter is in order to arouse the old love and the fondness for the Holy Land, for the land of Israel, so that it should be a, a burning like a fiery flame in the inward heart of a, in a deep way, in the, in the depth of the heart of, uh, of the Hasidim, as if it were that on this very day, Hashem gave us the spirit and the spirit of generosity so that people will donate and like will fill their, fill their hands with donations to God with a full hand and with a generous hand. So um, basically it's like the altar is saying that he wants his chassidim to be just as passionate, to be just as aroused to give and about this fund as if it was like the very beginning establishment of this fund. And this, should, this giving should increase year after year. Uh, and it should continuously rise and um, and be and become even more uh, as an, according to the measure of Kodesh HaElyon, the supreme holiness. So this supreme holiness is a reference to Chochmah. It's another way of referring to Chochmah. And so this idea of Chochmah, Chochmah is associated with the land of Israel. So uh, this Chochmah radiates in the land of Israel and it becomes, it's constantly being renewed and it's constantly become, becoming increased. As it says, and this is a citation from Devarim chapter 11, verse 12, that forever are, the, are your eye, the eyes of God on the land of Israel from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. And so this, okay, so now the altar Rabbah asks a question. So he says that this, this seems, this wording seems a little strange where it says that the uh, eyes of God are on on the lands of Israel from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. So what does that mean? Because like, you know, a much simpler way to say that if we're saying the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So, okay, the end of the year, at the end of the year, what happens? Now there's the beginning of the year. So a simpler way to say this it, is if it would have just said that the eyes of God are on the land of Israel forever and ever, right? Why start with the beginning of the year, the end of the year? So we could say, okay, the text is just being poetic, right? But there's got to be a deeper meaning behind it all. So to understand this, the altar Rabbah brings us to a citation from Mishle, which uh, it brings up a concept that's brought up a lot in Chassadis, but First, I'll start with the citation. So the citation is from Mishlei chapter 3, verse 19, where it says, Hashem that, the, that Hashem founded 
the land, the earth, through with Chokhmah. So the Alter Rebbe goes on and he explains that he, he says this earth that we're re- referencing here, it's specifically a reference to the Holy Land, to the land of Israel. And specifically when we talk about the land of Israel, there's actually, there there's the land of Israel as we know it, the physical earth of the land of Israel, but there's also like a spiritual representation, a spiritual mirror of this land, which is called the Eretz Hayluna, the supernal land. And in this way, then the Altar Rebbe says that Hashem fills all the worlds in this way. So it's very imminent there. Hashem is very, is imminent in this like spiritual supernal land of Israel. And then we have the lower land of Israel, which is the lower land of Israel is, called, is often referenced as Eretz Chefetz, the, the land of Hashem's desire. And this land, this physical land of Israel, parallels the spiritual land of Israel exactly. There's a correspondence there. And it's called by its name. It's called Eretz Haim, the land of life. So another name for Israel is the land of life. And this comes from this, this foundation of the land of Israel comes from the drawing down and the radiance of the supernal Chochmah, which is the source of the supernal worlds. As it is written, uh, and this is a citation from Eicha, chapter 7, verse 12, which literally means the Chochmah animates those who possess it. So meaning to say, what does that mean? Basically, it's, again, this idea that the Chochmah is what radiates, is what vivifies the whole land of Israel. And this radiance, uh, this drawing down, gets renewed with a new light every year, year after year after year. Because Hashem and his Chachma are one with utmost unity. And it's, uh, and it's called by the name of the Or Ein Sof Baruch Hu. This is the light of the Ein Sof Baruch Hu. So this, this Chachma is called the light of the Ein Sof. And so why is it called the light of the Ein Sof? The light of the infinite? Because there is no limit to it. There's no end to the greatness and the, um, and the, the level of this light and this vitality that comes from God. From his, uh, from him, and from his chokhmah, with from elevation upon elevation until no end, to the loftiest of levels. So that's the end of the section. So the basic idea here that the altar is getting at is just to really point out the uh, the great radiance that is found in the land of Israel. And it's true that you know a question that's coming up for me is we know that actually we've spoken about elsewhere that chokhmah that Hashem's chokhmah actually creates is responsible for the creation of the entirety of the world not just the land of israel but there's something it seems that's very particular about the land of israel that makes it even more there like hashem's chokhmah is even more present in some way in a way i guess of maybe it's related to the mamala kolal main aspect of it i'm not really sure maybe the altar of it will address it in the future but the basic takeaway from all of this is just to really show the specialness of the land of Israel and that Hashem's radiance is there in a really uh, intense way, in an infinite kind of way. And the reason why we say from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, because it's not just like if we were to just say that Hashem's radiance were there um, forever and ever, it would just be like, okay, Hashem's radiance is there and it doesn't change or whatever. No, it actually renews and there's a renewance of this radiance and there's a new radiance that comes down year after year after year so it's there's a movement in some direction and so this is related to the idea of the giving of tzedakah that again the altar of it is really trying to arouse his chassidim to be really passionate about, about giving tzedakah in the land of israel like really as in a very new passionate way like like similar to a new love you know that uh, that people would not not being burnt out that it's just like oh yeah we have to give again to the land of israel oh right uh, totally forgot about that i have to do that that's that's something on my to-do list or whatever but it's something we should be really really passionate about as if it were a new thing just like people were passionate about it in the very beginning when this fund was first established so that's it for today and we will continue with this epistle and conclude it tomorrow and i'll speak to you then thanks for listening to the it is top podcast hosted by sarit switzer this podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzchak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.
Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow. And until then, have a great day.